I would like to invite uh, Carla Jean Stokes and Jessalyn Jarvis, uh, to, who are both uh, participating in the three-day storage reorganization here at the Parksville Museum, to describe what the situation was before and to take a look at what it is after and uh, kind of explain a little bit uh, what the process was uh, throughout these three days. So thank you very much. All right, we didn't prepare anything, so enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my clicker. Uh, so hi, I'm Carla Jean Stokes from Oki French, and Jesslyn Jarvis, you've already heard from her today. And I hope you know what this is, because you are inside it right now. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is the Parksville Museum. Uh, I am assuming Alicia took this actually the morning that we arrived, maybe? Maybe, we'll just pretend intellectually that that's what it was. <laughs> Um, I guess we should, we've already heard a lot about the planning stages in when you're doing a reorg and a big part of that is having very um, detailed floor plans and knowing what is your before and what is your after and how are you going to really maximize that space and I think when you, when you all saw the tour, you saw that we took advantage as much as we could of every single piece of space even if it was on the walls or above a door, um, sometimes it's on a slanting ceiling maybe. Um, so yeah, we had to know what our floor plan was. You want to talk about that? <laughs> so here's the, the before uh, shot of storage room two. Um, you can see there's a, a variety of objects in here, um, textiles hanging, small and medium, <laughs> small and medium uh, artifacts. And uh, there are some frames as well, which aren't quite in the photo right now. Um, and this is the before picture for storage room one, which is sort of the archives. Um, but of course, it's got uh, artifacts as well. And this is the before photo of storage room three, which was just a, a collection of things. Um, no one seemed to be really sure exactly what was in there. There's some gift shop stuff and uh, some things that uh, were thrown out, and then as well some artifacts and some mystery items. Um, so this is our floor plan after, and it shows you storage one and storage two. And it's actually really interesting, like once again in the in the planning phases, when our team came together and we all met each other, we were divided into four colorized teams. And you saw the chart that shows you the, the boxes that are getting colored in, which decorated this wall. Um, and it was so important to know, like, what are these rooms called? Who is going where? And, and having a really, really strategic plan so that now everybody on the team could tell you where they were, what they did, what room, what every room is called and what its function is. So we knew the goals right from the start and that seemed like such an important thing. Uh, this is one of the first things uh, a part of the group did was clearing out uh, a workspace so that we actually had some, some room to move around and we had uh, all of our supplies on the table there, you can see in the corner. Um, so we just had to move out some um, objects which some of them were accessioned and some of them were mystery items and some of them hadn't been accessioned yet. Um, so we took those out of that room and uh, separated them into accessioned items and mystery items. Um, this is what the black, the black team was doing <laughs> on the beginning of day one, was just going through some of the artifacts that are normally on display in the heritage buildings and just making sure that they had a nice storage space for the off season and they'll come out soon. Um, so we'll see where those ended up in an after photo. Um, and this was sorting through the framed objects. Um, you will also have seen that we created a custom frame storage rack. Um, so obviously in preparation of doing that, we needed to create a temporary storage space for all the framed objects in what we would have called one of our swing spaces. And all of those objects were, were sorted by size and I believe by some of their materiality as well. So that when they went to their forever home, it would be the most ideal conditions that we could give them for the longevity of the item. Um, and so this is also the workspace. So after it was cleared out of all artifacts and mystery items, um, we took uh, a cabinet of index cards um, from storage room two, um, because it was a non-collections item, and moved it out into the workroom um, to create more space in storage room two. Um, uh, this is Chloe showing us, uh, I believe this is 3D objects that were originally stored in the archives. And so obviously a big goal of that was to take out objects that belong in storage room two. So the storage space where we know 
should have all of the 3D objects are all in one place and that the archives is devoted only to like paper-based type objects. Um, this is storage two before, and this is us taking all of the objects out. So that was a huge job um, where we had established the gallery was our swing space and we had labeled everything for medium and small size 3D objects. Um, so everything was moved out and organized slightly while it was in the swing space so that it would be much easier for anybody to put it back into storage too once once the space was reorganized. Uh, this is uh, us rolling textiles. So there were quite a few textiles that are rather large. There were three rugs um, that we had to roll. We rolled them onto cardboard tubes. We wrapped the tubes in ethafoam um, and rolled the carpet on with a layer of tissue. Um, so there were three rugs, and then we also uh, rolled a few smaller pieces side by side on one cardboard tube and layered them as well. <laughs> this is the creation of the pegboard, which was uh, basically everyone's kind of up there with their maybe favorite uh, uh, items, or sort I want to say storage hacks or like tricks for how we can store things. Um, this is a really great way of how can we maximize our wall space or even in the example of another museum that Simon worked with, their slanted roof space. And this is Brian uh, building a frame so that we could install it on the wall. So we maximized that whole wall uh, around the door. So although we might think that a wall that has a door in it, we can't maximize the space when in reality we can. So that's a photo of the Gantt chart um, that we used in order to determine what we had completed, what needed to be completed first, then second, then third, and then we filled in the boxes in red as we went along so other teams would know where we were um, in the progress. It's also incredibly satisfying when you get to be the one to color in the box. <laughs> I, I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, this is our swing space after day one. So it's kind of full, um, but it, everything depended on, again, teamwork and communication and having a, a well-articulated plan, and everything was well-labeled, so everyone knew where things should be going in the swing space. That's me checking <laughs> off one of the tasks. <laughs> this was day three, so um, by the middle, well, basically by the beginning of the day on day three, we had taken that entire wall of a to-do list and condensed it down to just one list. And then that's what we tackled on our last day. So we actually made really amazing progress. Um, this is the installation of the custom frame rack. And you can see the pegboard is now installed on the wall. Um, OK, so this is us uh, uh, installing the uh, sliding compact shelving uh, wire racks. Um, there is a track. Uh, on the floor, and the racks were just placed in rolling tracks. Rolling tracks, <laughs> um, and they they can uh, they can slide along the floor uh, really easily, um, but they're quite compact. Mm -hmm. You can also see the rolled textiles on the top of the shelves, and you'll notice. I don't know if, if anyone is interested, but you'll notice that the, the compact storage is actually moved to one side. So we knew that we didn't have a ton of space. So ideally, we could have one large aisle as opposed to two very small aisles. And then when the, when the, the, the compact storage is open, you can still access the far wall. <laughs> this is us lining up to place the frames back in the, the new um, frame shelving, uh, the, the shelving um, was all reconstructed and um, lined with ethafoam. There it is. <laughs> so that's the, the frame storage there. So basically the whole team created a system where they could move so no one would run into anyone else. And, and it's really how we harness like, the power of our team by making everyone pitch in and know what the plan was and work together. Um, so this is storage two before and storage two after. And the, the side, these are photographs that are in the filing cabinets, uh, so before. And then after with our custom frame rack. And then you can see the textile is hung above the door and then the pegboard. So just maximizing every inch of space that we could using creative solutions.
So that's uh, storage room one before. And storage room one afterwards. We go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we created a custom map rack above the uh, the Mac map filing cabinet and that was one that we really had to improvise we opened it up to the team who can come up with a creative solution for this and i believe it was the brainchild of of chloe but i could be wrong if, if um and we designed it to be kind of like a wine rack uh, <laughs> <laughs> and but when you say that everyone knows what it means so it worked out really well and it's really amazing because that was a lot of teamwork and most of the materials were kind of recycled from other projects so there's so much that you can do with the materials that you have on hand to make them work for you. That's storage room three before. And that's storage room three afterwards. So I think this uh, ended up containing education, props, some gift shop things as well, and supplies, I believe. So non-collections and non-archive items. Mm -hmm. And this is our team. Yes. This at the end. <laughs>